HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from the annual Keep Smiling for Abbey Field Hockey Fundraiser. The Hopkinton Wellness Fair took place and I sat down with members from the Lauren Anderson Memorial Fundraiser. But first, the Hopkinton Police Department hosted their annual National Night Out event. The annual Hopkinton Police Department National Night Out event took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. A big turnout was on hand and a number of vendors were on the scene. So as part of this event, um, we're promoting the education and outreach we're doing in town, vaping and substance abuse programming that we're doing in the community. So we've got you know locally specific brochures that we put together uh, coupled with um, some of the state uh, Department of Public Health information and then just looking to educate people about you know what the department's doing in general um, throughout the community. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, and teaching parents what a jewel looks like. Ah, that's okay. the that's the key thing right now. Is right. Educating people about what you know what to look for in their kids. So uh, it's a jewel and it's a uh, battery uh, charger for a computer. So uh, so we're going to be offering a lot more education on that coming up this September to both parents and the students. Awesome. Fuel Up to Play 60 is a campaign that's going on between the National Dairy Council and the NFL. So we go to local communities such as this one and we also go to Patriots Training Camp and we promote healthy eating for kids and exercise and we just like to have fun with the kids and have them learn something today and then we give them a prize so it's just fun for everybody. So the wheel is for just for kids and they can come up and they can learn a little bit more about how to stay active and eat healthy different foods and what they should be eating every day. So we just want kids to come up and spin it. Well, we're uh, still right in the middle of it, but I, I think this is probably the um, uh, most attended event we've had over the years. And it's really starting to catch on, and we're really bringing the police and the community together to work on solving problems. And the whole essence of this is crime prevention, and we're doing our best to educate the public and just work with the public and let them know. All right, that kid's going to get arrested. <laughs> just kidding. But, um, no. Seriously, it's all about you know communication and, and letting the uh, public know that what we do on a daily basis. And we've always had a great partnership with the, the citizens and uh, you couldn't ask for a better community when it comes to the police and the community working together. Can you talk about some of the different officers you have here today? Oh, well, we have uh, most of our, pretty much have our whole department here, but uh, this is a big year because this is the first year that we're going to do a uh, demonstration with our newest K-9 Titan. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. And today's my birthday and um, 
Oh, happy birthday. Well, thank you. And I guess there might be a surprise for me on my birthday. I, I think I might have to take a bite on the sleeve. I'm not too excited about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Those in attendance also got a first-hand look at the Hopkinton canine unit in action. Sure, so I work um, obviously here at Hopkinton Police Department. Um, hi there, hello buddy. Um, my dog is a one and a half-ish year old German Shepherd and we just recently got out of um, Police Academy for patrol through Boston Police Canine Academy. Um, he was one of my classmates too. So uh, during that 14 week period, we got certified in um, tracking um, criminal apprehension, building searches, area searches, evidence searches, um, agility, obedience. obedience. Am I missing anything else? No. So we got done with that class in January, and then um, we both went right back into secondary school, detection school, um, where my dog got certified in explosive detection. Um, again, that was through Boston Police Canine Academy, and that was a 10 week course. And um, Mike's dog got certified in narcotics six weeks course through uh, Plymouth County. Okay, very nice. Um, so what are you showing the kids here uh, today? Um, basically everything that we just explained to you. We're going to do um, some brief demonstrations on what the dogs are capable of doing. Um, we're going to run through um, basically what I just told you, what we're capable of, um, bring out some equipment, explain what each one of those is used for in our training, and then I will bring the dogs out and show you some exercises. So what I'm going to have my dog do is going to be called an evidence search. So in my pocket here I have a knife. I'm going, to throw it, I'm going to throw it up into the grass. Quiet. I'm going to throw it up into the grass. He's not going to be able to see it. He's just going to look, with, he's going to search with his nose. And he's going to let me know when he found it by laying down on it. The Hopkinton Health Department, in coordination with Parks and Recreation and Hopkinton Youth and Family Services, hosted a wellness fair at the Town Common. Here's a look. About 35 vendors were on the Hopkinton Town Common as part of this year's Hopkinton Health and Wellness Fair. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene to capture some of the festivities. Good afternoon, I'm Sean McAuliffe, I'm the health director in the town of Hopkinton. What we, actually my, my intern Carolyn 
uh, we had her put together a health fair. We haven't had a health fair since what? 2013, I believe. 2013. Yeah. yeah. So we figured. Yeah, well, you, well, why don't you? You, <laughs> you uh, work to help put a lot of this together. <laughs> Yeah, but. we had put together all this information and we were saying, what are, how are we going to distribute this to the community? What's our, you know, route of passage? We said, there's really nothing that's going to work for us. We're not going to do it at the carnival. So we said, why don't we throw our own carnival, bring everybody in, and it turned out to be a great event, so. So how long did it take you to put this together? What, a month and a half, two months? Yeah, it it's was. It's been a long work in progress. But you developed an SOP that all of the other uh, municipal departments can utilize. Um, and then what we figured was with what's been unusual this year is we've got incredible support from uh, the community on some of our other projects. So we figured would have, you know, an informational event. We have we have activities for the kids um, to engage in. We have a, like a nationally touring band here. Um, so it, we're trying to create an event where people can just uh, hang out, enjoy, learn something and uh, we're just at, a, at yeah, the end of the day. Really all encompassing. Well, we're really happy to have a booth for Youth and Family Services. And today we have the Wheel of Prevention, where kids can come down and spin a wheel and answer a question or tell a joke or talk about when they've last been kind in order to get a prize. Um, we're happy to have a lot of really nice giveaways um, about Hopkinton Organizing for Prevention, which is a prevention coalition organized through our office um, for youth and the community. Excellent. Now, um, I see your name on all the paperwork here as far as uh, being with Parks and Rec and everything. How, did, how were you involved in forming this event today? More just through support. Support. Sean is really Sean McAuliffe of um, the health, the Board of Health. He really is the person who put this whole thing together with his intern. And so they deserve all the credit. We just supported and said, yes, we'll be here. And we gave some feedback about different thoughts they were having, but that's where it ended. They did all this great work themselves. Let's pick them out of oh, here. you pick them out of there. Oh, okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Voodoo. Voodoo who? Voodoo you think you are asking all these questions? There you go. Nicely done. Good job. And now you get a prize for that? Yeah. So you can pick out a prize out of this prize bin. We have some really fun frigid toys. Oh, cool. Some slime and stuff. Nice. Some stress balls. Some like fidget spinners and like some sticky men and all kinds of things. Cool. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll talk to members from the Lauren Anderson Memorial Fundraiser. And we have scenes from the Keep Smiling for Abby Field Hockey Fundraiser. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Keep Smiling for Abby Field Hockey Fundraiser seems to be growing on an annual basis with participants and attendance. Here's a look at this year's event. Several local field hockey teams competed in the annual Keep Smiling for Abby Field Hockey event. A great attendance was on hand at the Teamworks facility in Northboro to take in the action and support a great cause. Yeah, it was a great day. We, this is the sixth annual Keep Smiling for Abby field hockey fundraiser to stop anaphylaxis. Uh, we had uh, a couple of tournament teams here from Natick, Ashland, uh, Bellingham, and Shrewsbury. Uh, the Hopkinton alumni and varsity played. We had a parent and community game. It was a really fun day. 
Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so who will be taking home the big prize? Today? You know, I just learned. I think the the, Varth, the the cup, the Keep Smiling Cup, is out here somewhere. Uh, I just learned that it was a tie game between the. I don't know why we didn't go to overtime for a winner, but I guess for the first time ever, it was a tie. Uh, okay, excellent. And um, for those that don't know, can you talk about uh, what this event's all about? Sure. This is a, a fundraiser to stop anaphylaxis. My daughter Abby played field hockey in Hopkinton. Uh, she she suffered an anaphylactic reaction to food about five and a half years ago. Uh, she passed away from that reaction. We started a, a foundation. The foundation raises money to uh, fund research into early detection. Uh, we also fund two scholarships in Tana Hopkinton. Terrific. And uh, just seeing that this event just keeps growing and growing, it, it must uh, mean a lot to you. It does. It's very. It's a, it's a great event, a great day. It's a lot of work to put it together. We've got a lot of supporters, a lot of volunteers that help us. Uh, but it's a great day. It's a big thing for people to give up a Saturday in the summer to come out and, and spend a Saturday with us. Today was a perfect beach day, but they spent it inside a sweaty gym playing some field hockey. So we're very grateful. Hey! Yeah. 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 We go to UNH. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What year did you graduate at Hopkinton? I graduated 2014. And I was 2017, but when I was a freshman, she was a senior on the team. Yeah, so we so get to overlap. Yeah, and play fun. with Abby. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, yeah. So who won the game today? Um, they said it was a tie, yeah. but I'd like to say it was alumni. <laughs> it was, yeah, definitely <laughs> alumni. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the scoreboard, but it was fun, though. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. <laughs> Everyone did a great it's job. It's all just for a good cause, no matter who wins. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Always fun to play again, too, and get out on the field with some yeah. old teammates and remember and Abby. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what made you play here today? Yeah, so we've played every year since it started because we were on the team with Benny. So it's just kind of like a great way to get back together, see everyone. Yeah. Again, it's like an amazing cause. Keep smiling. It's just a great thing. And we like to support it in every way we can. Yeah. Tom Nappy here with Kathy Kilduff and Curran Leahy Lonnie Gro from the Lauren Anderson Memorial Fundraiser. Ladies, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. So for those that don't know, can you explain what the Lauren Anderson Memorial Fundraiser is all about and also how it got started? We have two objectives for our project. One is to honor a very special young lady on the 25th anniversary of her passing, Lauren Anderson. And the other is to upgrade the Lauren Anderson field to uh, match the quality of the other athletic fields at Hopkinton High School. So those are our two primary goals and objectives. Terrific. And how did the Lauren Anderson Memorial Fund get started? We are uh, neighbors um, of the Anderson family. And there was a corner of six families that all joined together as the kids were growing up and we were all from other parts other than Hopkinton and we just became like family to one another. We were talking one night and we were remembering that this is the 25th anniversary of Lauren's passing. And we said, let's go take a look at her field. And so we got in our car and we drove by and we said, became evident fairly quickly that the field needed some work. So we put two and two together and we said, what a wonderful way to celebrate the memory of Lauren and do something that she loved. She loved softball and she loved, she loved her teammates and this would be a way to marry the two and honor a very special young woman. And Karen, I understand you knew Lauren well. Can you talk about the type of person that Lauren was and how you knew each other? Sure. So uh, Lauren was my best friend and I'm, I'm proud to be able to say that. Um, we knew each other from the time we were very little, I think really when she first moved to town. 
Um, and she was obviously an athlete. You know, the softball field is, is named for her now, um, and we want it to be named for her uh, going forward um, because she was an athlete. She was a softball player, she was a cheerleader, um, and she was an avid equestrian. Um, I'm getting emotional. Um, she, was, she was also, though, you know, as Kathy said, she was just a wonderful friend, and I feel really proud that she was my friend. Um, but she was a friend to everybody. You know, back when we graduated, which was 96, our class was, I think, 76 students. So we were a really close-knit community generally. Um, everyone was sort of friends with everybody, but Lauren really epitomized that more than anybody else. She was friends with everybody. And it was evident then, and it's certainly evident now as we're starting to reach out to folks and folks are telling us like this means so much to us because Lauren meant so much to us. It yeah. is amazing as we st as we started to build a team we reached out to her classmates and her teammates and townspeople. I mean this is certainly a, gra a grassroots effort and to a person everybody remembered her and they remembered her qualities and most of all every single person said, I remember Lauren Sparkle. And that, to the, the team itself and the core team of, of people, that is so evident, it's, it, it's heartwarming to see that not only was she remembered, but that her legacy has lived on for 25 years. Yeah, I think it's a credit to, to her, absolutely, and I think it's also a credit to her family, too. Um, you know, Ricky, Lauren's mom, said at Lauren's funeral, um, you know, remember to always watch for the sparkle. And I think that as young kids experiencing a loss, we wanted something to really be able to, you know, always hold on to um, and have a positive way of framing this really terrible experience. And so I think, too, it's a credit to, to Ricky really in teaching um, all the young people in town and, and probably the older generation, too. Um, this is the best way to be able to sort of move forward from this and, and really remember Lauren. We want to bring that sparkle back to her field through this upgrade. And from what I read, there's been a few organizations that have been helping you guys out? We definitely do. We have uh, a team of, of individual classes. We have the school is, is involved and support the project. We have um, Little League. We have Friends of Hopkinton. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, absolutely Parks and Rec, um, because they'll be the, uh, the Women's League plays on Lawrence Field, as do um, the middle school JV and varsity teams, as do, I think Parks and Recs have, have um, games there, and tournaments are played there because it's a dirt field. So the field gets used. There's, there's life on that field, and it's exciting to be able to do an upgrade and have them um, benefit from it. So can you talk more about the motivation behind wanting to renovate Field 6? And also, what are some of the things that you'd like to renovate Absolutely. with Field 6? So currently, Field 6 is named after Lauren. There is a, a scoreboard up on the field in her name now. And as Kathy mentioned earlier, um, the, the caliber of the field really just doesn't match what we feel uh, Lauren deserves. But we also feel that the, the quality doesn't match with the community deserves. Um, you know, we are obviously passionate about this project because we're passionate about remembering Lauren, but again, because we feel like there is something that the entire community can gain from these renovations. Uh, we've heard from organizations that use the field currently, like the Women's Varsity Team, like the uh, Women's Rec League, to say that the field is at times unusable. Um, there's trees that are overgrowing. Um, there's really no actual dugout. It's just a bench behind a, behind a fence. Um, oftentimes, the, the fields are in such a condition that you can't even use the outfield. Um, and so we really want to upgrade the field so that the community can take the full advantage um, that it deserves to be able to take. So again, some of the things that we're hoping to upgrade, you know, certainly upgrading the scoreboard in Lauren's name. Um, also making sure that the trees are back away from the field so that uh, they're not encroaching, they're not making it uncomfortable for the players. They can actually find foul balls when they go over the fence. Um, also putting in a warning track 
for safety purposes. A bleacher on the visitor's side and um, dugouts. Exactly. And perhaps uh, maybe uh, some of the players now would get involved in this project. Absolutely. And, and again, I think, you know, if, if we hope that you connect to the project for many reasons. You know, we would love for you to connect to it because Lauren was such a, a wonderful individual. Um, but if you connect because you're a player, if you connect because you have a child who's a player in a league, or again, you just feel like that, you know, Hopkinton itself deserves high quality athletic fields throughout, whether it's football or, or softball, um, we hope that you would consider participating in the project. Stick around, we'll have the rest of this interview to close out HCAM News. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. If somebody wanted to volunteer or donate, where could they go for more information? So I thank you for putting a wonderful letter and donation details on your website. So if anyone wants to donate via check or um, uh, an online uh, donation via PayPal, you've put it out there very well. And um, all they need to do is follow uh, your instructions. The other things that people could do would be to spread the word with Facebook and direct emails. I mean, the word is out instantaneously. Our project is one week old at the moment, and we can feel the energy. It's, it's, I think because it's, it's doing something that's positive for the community, by the community, it has really taken off, and we're, we're really grateful for that. Um, and then the last thing people could do is volunteer their talent or their time. We're going to be um, executing some activities and events. We're still in the planning stages, but a couple of them are things like um, the alumni softball game. I felt a lot of energy. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but to see this interview in its entirety, you can head over to our website, hcam.tv.